Hi everyone, I'm Marie and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Wooly Wednesday! Oh, happy Wednesday friends near and far. So many of you are checking in from across the pond and we are so grateful that you are here with us. We are Living Felt and Felting Tutorials. I'm all askew back there from, uh, based in Central Texas. We're so glad you're here with us. If you stumbled across this feed, welcome to the live show. Today, we are going to go over a variety of needle felting foams and pads. We're gonna share with you our new Wow Felt Pads and Wow We Felt Toppers. We are going to look a little bit at felting noodles, including our brand new felting needle, the 38 Star Spiral. And we're gonna look at a whole slew of of felting needle tools and holders and hopefully help you demystify some of these things so that you can choose the things that are right for you. And today's an interactive show, so we want you to ask questions. Let us know what you're wanting to know. If we don't get to answer it in today's show, we are taking note for future Q&A sessions or future uh, specialized topics so that we can answer them for you. Um, so be sure everything's going on over there in the live chat. If you're watching the replay, thank you so much for being here. Comment down below because we read all of your comments. And when you chat or post your comment after, you get entered to win prizes. So a few weeks back, we had the lovely Esther Baba here uh, of Incarno is her studio name, teaching, uh, well, sit, filming for our school. And um, she used our new tools while she was here. And so some prize winners from commenting on her her show are Melinda Hoffman and Darlene Deruccia. I hope I said that right. Congratulations, y'all. You win either a Mr. Fiddle's kit, a little 3D needle felting kit, or the Jellyfish 2D kit right behind me. So you can just use the contact us page on our website and we'll make sure that you get that. So as always with me here are the lovely fairies and they're going to share, you, share with you just a little glimpse at some of the things little and large that we'll be looking at today. And the first up is the lovely fairy Anne. Yay! <laughs> Thank y'all so much for spending this time with us. We are so happy we get to share, share this time and hang out with our coolest felting friends. Um, so we have got some really fun stuff to share with you today. So I'm going to start out here. These are two of the smallest sizes of felting surfaces that we have. This is our handy dandy trusty um, had it for ages. This is our Earth Harmony series of foam. It is a very high density soy based foam. It is great for 2D pictures, 3D pictures. And then uh, this is our new WOW felt pad in the five inch by five inch size. Woo <laughs> We've been obsessing over how adorable this is. Um, and as you can see, there's a little bit, oh, this is two, this is two, this is one. Uh, as you can see, it's a little, it's a lot denser. Uh, and we'll go over the differences in between them more later fun stuff to come, stay tuned. But these two sizes are excellent for if you're, if you're wanting to have a needle felting party with your neighbors, friends, if you're wanting to needle felt with kiddos. This is, these two sizes are fan favorites. They're great toe in the water. Or if you're needing to buy uh, for a felting party, these are our go-tos. We do have a 25 and a 50 pack of the Earth Harmony series five inch by five inch size and Stay tuned because we're going to have some bulk buying options for the 5x5 five five Wow Felt Pad as well. Ooh. Yeah. You are very excited, Anne. Woo Super excited. <laughs> <laughs> and we've got more fun stuff here. Next up is Fairy Alyssa. Woo -hoo! Yay! Okay, so I'm here to show you some of the larger sizes that we have. These ones will be in our Earth Harmony series. This first one will be 16 by 20, and the second one will be 18 by 24, and these are awesome for your larger uh, 2D or 3D projects. All right, and then I got this guy. This is our um, green soy, sorry, green soy mat. It's gonna be about 17 by 20. And this is actually really good for your larger 3D projects. 
All righty, back to you, Marie. Very nice. Woo! Thank you, thank you. And of course, Wooly Wednesday isn't complete without a little punny for your day. <laughs> so coming to you uh, from the field is the very funny fairy Kayla. Woo! Everyone, Woo! put some hearts. Hi everybody, happy Wooly Wednesday. It's so good to see you. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I hope you're having a great week so far. I just wanted to pop in really quick and share some funniness for you before the before the show began. Uh, so I did have a question for everybody. What do you call it when a sheep jumps out at you? What, what do, do you call it when a sheep jumps out at you? A lambush. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, everybody. I hope you have fun today, and, and I'll see you next week. Oh, that was so good. I just see a big round of hearts for Kayla. She is our fairy in the field, officially. <laughs> Kayla, uh, for those of you who don't know, this is our crew. They pack your orders. They answer your emails. Um, uh, can I chair? They answer your emails, they answer the phone, they make everything that we sell and uh, make us laugh all day long too. So Fairy Kayla is now a remote fairy and we're so grateful that she's still sending in her very funny jokes. <laughs> Thank you. And so we're gonna get the up close and personal today uh, on all of these things. We're seeing your questions come through. We're gonna do our best to answer them. If we don't answer your question, if we don't get to it, would you mind posting it after the live show down below and that way we're sure we'll catch them because your comments come through really fast but all of them are really important to us and uh, we'll do our best to answer those and if if it's off topic we probably won't cover it I already saw one come through but we'll see if we can um, try and answer some of those at the end or at least tell you where you can get the answers to them Yes, yes, okay, good. All right, so let me go over here and I've got this madness on my table that you can see. And some of it I'll be pushing out of the way and we're just going to find our way through these, these products um, together one at a time. So I'm gonna show you a little tiny uh, here, put some of these behind me. A little tiny needle felting foam. This is our Earth Harmony foam. Uh, Alyssa showed you the um Alyssa showed you the large sizes and showed you the small sizes we have a bunch of sizes in between well not a bunch bunch but we have a 12 by 12 we have a 10 by 7 those are very popular medium sizes we have um the larger ones we have hat forms as well and it's a really interesting product so when we first started uh, making our own foam we wanted something as environmentally friendly as possible these are made here in the USA and they're very dense like they're they're very very dense and the cells are fairly closed so they can really take the felting needle well um, but it is possible to destroy them if the you're punching your wool into it to severely too closely some of the things we like about them are that they're dense are that they're dark which i think is a lot more common now when i started foams were all white and they were very squishy um, and this what we love about it is it has over 65 percent bio-based products in the makeup so it makes us less dependent on fossil fuels and they also last a really long time if you take care of them my um, favorite way to clean these is just with a lint roller and this one isn't um, really dirty which <laughs> probably doesn't help you but let's see so I like to use a very sticky like pent pet lint roller I just get these on Amazon but as an example you know when you've been needle felting you probably can't see that color on there at all huh when you've been needle felting on something um, and it gets all this wool on it and just for fun I'm just gonna I'm just gonna punch it in here as if I've been working well usually you peel your stuff off let me just do this So that's kind of in there. Now, I don't really like to be that aggressive with my foam, but sometimes, you know, your wool is gonna get stuck in there. And even though you try and peel it off, maybe some stuff is left. So our recommendation 
is to go ahead and clean it with a really sticky lint roller. Now everyone has different preferences of what they like to do, but I find that a lint roller, a very sticky one, is really great for that initial pass, and then I'll pluck out what I can. So for this foam, because this foam could get damaged if you're too aggressive with it, then I would use a sticky lint roller on something like this. Let's go. And what's happening? All right, we are very excited about the felting mats. <laughs> okay, okay, and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna jump to the felting mats. So I'm gonna start with where we started, the Greet the Earth Harmony foam. Uh, it's been around a long, long time. It's definitely a fan favorite. We do have it available in bulk now. I just wanted you to kind of see the density. So let me see if I can cut across here and show you like how dense this is. I'm really kind of pushing on this thing and it allows you then to have some nice resistance underneath what you're doing and it's dense without being brittle. I'm not a big fan of, I'm not a big fan of, some people like to use styrofoam or insulation foam and I do have dear friends and great felters who use it. For me personally, I don't like to use something so brittle because I feel like there's a higher chance that the wool, since it's still a somewhat open cell product, wraps around the material and then comes out with your project in chunks. And we have done many pet portraits on our Earth Harmony foam, uh, full face portraits on our Earth Harmony foam, in, you know, the larger sizes of course, um, without ruining the foam. Now, if you're very intense and you leave it on for a project that takes days and days to do, you probably are gonna see an indent. But if you don't go too aggressive with your needles, if you're not using 36 triangles, and we'll cover needles in a second, and 32 triangles, something that's overly aggressive or going too far in your foam, then it should still hold up pretty well if you're using, say, 38s and finer. Any questions on the just this foam? On the this harmony? Mm -hmm. uh, Michelle wants to know, would a closed cell foam work? Right, which I think you're talking about. These. So this is, this is fairly closed while still being an open cell product. Um, but when you're talking about like that insulation foam is more brittle and it's just a completely different material, you really should experiment with it and what you're felting on it and the aggressiveness of your needles. Because if you're only doing 3D, well then you could use almost anything, you know? It, it's depending on how far you're poking through the other side of what you're working. And that's what we're looking for it is a felting work surface that can support how we're working. So my goal today is just to help give you a little more information on these different types of products so that you can decide which one is better for you or which one is better for your project. Jan wants to know, what is the thickness in inches for the Earth Harmony these are These are currently an inch and a half. These are an inch and a half thick. And when I get to the toppers, the felt toppers, you'll see that you, you could use these guys together as well. But I'll tuck this guy side for the moment. And I want to share with you our green soy foam. So this was like us trying to get to a next level, if you will, a next level eco-friendly product. And both of these products have been around for more than a decade. Um, the green soy foam, let me see, I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a little riser here. The green soy foam is a soy based product. It is not as dense. I mean, it, you know, it'll kind of push, you can push on it but it springs back. One side, it's gonna be hard for you to see it, but if you've owned one, you know that one side has kind of a skin and the other side is a little more open and is squishier. You wanna use the side that has like the skin on it. it. This is a more closed cell top and you won't be able to see it from here, but this is definitely more closed cell because it's like it has a coating across it. So the Earth Harmony really was, or the green soy foam was really an alternative to thicker foams, um, about as green as we could get because it's made in a zero waste facility here in the United States. Um, and it's good for especially like little 3D projects or when you don't mind this sort of low profile to your table, which I like to work on. I like having a low profile. You can use it on a, if you're doing something 2D, you could use it on a lap desk or on a book. The thing with any of these 
felting pads or felting surfaces is you really should clean them after every use ideally after every use and this one I clean the same way I'm going to clean it with a lint roller and then a finger pluck a lint roller and then a finger pluck so it is a it is a foam product um, it may not last as long as others depending on how you treat it I would treat this more for um, 2d work that you're not really plunging in or ideally for for 3d work any questions on this Anne Nope, no okay, questions. so just a, we have a couple of options for these, and we really liked these ones for travel. This was like really the big travel one, and it's flexible as you can see. It can roll, uh, and the big ones too, and some people just like that big footprint. But our new loves are the wow pads, and we call them wow because they are, you're felting wool on wool. So we have the wow, and we have the wow wee topper. They are incredibly dense. And now that the truth be known, the sticker doesn't come on the product. These come in a um, plastic sleeve, a packaged sleeve, and the sticker will be on the outside. It doesn't really matter. But I want to show you how dense these guys are. They're super, super dense. And let's see if I can get far back here. So like, I can't even change what it, let's go here. I can't even change what it looks like by pressing on it. So it's very, very dense. It is 100% wool. This is the non-stinky stuff. You know, if you've had a stinky ironing pad, this is not that. Um, this is 100% wool product. So we have this, as they showed you, we have the um, five by five, or sorry, the five by five, where's my nine by nine? Did I lose it? I lost my nine by nine. Would you grab me one, Anne? Oh, for sure. Right now we have the, the 12 by 12, a nine by nine, and a five by five. And we are looking at larger sizes most of the time. Thank you so much. This is like my little go-to guy. I love working in my lap on this because I'm often doing small projects. If you're doing larger products, projects, you might like the 12 by 12. And if you're looking for a larger size, let us know. Because it's 100% wool, because it's felted wool, they, you know, they do get more expensive as we get larger, but we are looking to make um, a larger size on our next run. And the challenge right now is shipping the larger sizes. So uh, we're exploring the shipping options for those so we can keep them as affordable for you as possible. I want to answer some questions on these. So now we have done great projects on these. In fact, um, Kimberly Pulley did an entire portrait on one. She did the Blossom portrait when she was here a few months back. Um, I've done complete landscapes on them. I work, I've been working on this size for many months. And I didn't, I know my husband, every time he came to my work studio, he'd say, I love your setup. I love your setup because it looks so clean and minimalistic, which is not really me. <laughs> not really <laughs> minimalistic. I can make a mess in five minutes flat. But I really liked it too because it felt very contained. Um, cleaning these, I want to show you how, how to clean these and how you might. Um, but let me talk, talk about the toppers first so you understand these guys. Those of you, if you've been felting with me for a little while, if you've been following our tutorials, let us know over here in the chat. Um, one of the things you've seen me do at times when we're making a little flat 2D piece, like an animal ear or some little shape, is I'll park a little piece of felt on the corner of my felting foam so that it doesn't attach to the foam. And when I first, first, first started felting, we used to keep like one pad, for whites and one pads for black or we would try and use the opposite sides that didn't really work but we would try and keep a felting mat for white and a felting mat for black and so when I was designing these toppers I really wanted to have a white topper and a black topper that you could just park right here on top of your felting mat so if you're doing something black and you really want to keep as many light color fibers out of it as possible or keep as many of these dark fibers out of something light as possible you could just put your topper here and not worry about that black collection and the same thing with the white um, so the white would be for the keeping those light fibers out of other things and keeping dark fibers out of it. You can use these toppers on your felt, your like Earth Harmony foam. If you prefer to work on a thicker surface, you can use these on top of your Earth Harmony foam. Um, these are not designed to be used stand alone, meaning because your needles would poke through. But I do think that they would make great little canvases. 
a little freestanding canvas because they're they're about a quarter inch thick is the thickness we've made them so if you wanted to do a little canvas and just mount this on something in a shadow box or something I think it'd make a great little canvas either one could make a great canvas because it's just wool um, I even think this guy would make a cute little canvas <laughs> so I do I mean, you could cover them a hundred percent and he'd make a cute little canvas for sure so the toppers aren't designed to be used stand alone when you get your toppers, in fact, before you use them the first time, they are going to become come in a packaging. Um, but I recommend that you clean them before you use them, especially if you're using this pristine white for what for light colored fibers and the black for black colored fibers. The reason is they're made in a facility where all the other felt pads are made, and so they're going to collect these errant fibers on their journey. So when you first open it, you might feel like there's fibers already in there that they've just kind of collected from the environment. So let's look at this here if we can. Can you see any of that, mm, uh, any fibers in, in here? Coming yes. a little closer? Just maybe just a little closer. Okay. Let's see if I'm on the right button here. Oh, beautiful. Okay, okay. So you can see how this has a, a, a few like little dark fibers up here in the corner. We'll just take your lint roller, and if anything doesn't come up, well then just don't worry about it. But putting these two together, the black and the white, one will pick one up. So there are gonna be some dark fibers that are embedded as part of the construction, but don't worry about that. They're not, they're, this isn't designed to be a, a clean room where you walk through a sticky mat before you get in the door. It's just a helper um, to help you kind of keep your fibers contained. And I wouldn't really put these two, these two together. So here's my black mat. You can see it's got a little white fibers. I've been parking my white mat on it. So before you use it for the first time, just remove any fibers that are loose on the surface. Let me give this one more rub. And you can see how clean that comes up. So my topper mats, I would store in a plastic bag or a plastic sleeve in between each use. So clean it before you use it and clean it after you use it. So clean it before you use it the first time, clean it after you use it, and then when you're all done, put it in like a storage bag, a freezer bag or something like that. Questions? Oh my goodness, we are feeling so inspired by these new felt pads. <laughs> we, I love them, by the way. I we, love them. We have so many questions. Okay. They're broken down into two categories. We all right. have questions about just the felt pads and then how the felt pads relate to the other foams. Okay. So. <clears throat> Bring it. All right. <laughs> Are the felt, uh, the wow felt pads or the toppers washable? I wouldn't put them in the washing machine, but think of how, how would you clean any other felt? So if you're, if you want to spot clean it, if you stain it, if you spill your coffee on it or something, it's going to clean like any other felt. So if you want to spot clean it with water and a washcloth first, um, and then if that doesn't work, you might try something like Folex. Like if you're trying to get a stain out, you might try Folex, um, but just go gently. I mean, these are non-dyed. This is 100%, the gray are 100% natural wool, non-dyed. So I'm not worried about any color leaching, but would the color shift with a chemical? Potentially. The black are dyed. Um, and so, yeah. I mean, I don't, if you throw it in the washing machine, it's something's going to happen. <laughs> it's going to shrink or whatever. So be mindful of that. Yeah. Are the More. top oh, are the toppers 100% wool? The toppers are wool. Yes, the toppers are 100% wool. Are the toppers needed to use the wow felt? No, pads? you don't need the topper. The topper is keeping your fibers separate, like you're keeping your colors separate or especially like you could use them, like I said, if you're trying to do a 2D ear or something, what happens when you're doing a little flat 2D piece that says 100% wool like an animal ear is you tend to get a lot of fiber embedded into whatever surface you're working on. It's a little worse on something like a foam product because it's open cell and they tend to stick. That's why I usually put felt, I put a little felt square in the corner and needle felt on that. This is just designed to give you a bigger, a bigger support. So when Esther Baba was here and she was working on the um, 
black pit bull, we started to use this pad, and we didn't end up using it because it because the photography was bad, like the black on black, we, we couldn't you know photo shoot it, but that's what it's designed for. So whether you're using a whole black 3D sculpture or a little black 3D pieces, it's just to help keep whatever surface you're working on a little bit cleaner. How are the well, wow felt pads different from an ironing mat? Um, Really, they're probably not. So the wow felting pads are 100% wool. The one thing you know is that I have worked with the factory directly to make these for us, and I've tested them, and I know that they don't stink. <laughs> so you can use them. This one of the blessings of these is that you can use it as an ironing mat as well. So if you use it for a 2D picture, then you can just press your product your finished product right on the mat. The only thing is because they're 100% wool and there's no backing, if you're going to iron over this, heat will pass through and you want to make sure that whatever surface you're ironing on can take the heat. Like I work on these tables from Ikea and I can iron on them all day long just through a sheet. It's like nothing seems to ruin them. But if you have your cutting mat underneath there, I promise it will warp. Um, if you have grandma's antique table under there, the heat will pass through and, and you will ruin it. So they are, um, they're probably very similar, but all I can say is I've worked with these, I've tested these, I know they don't stink and that these were made, you know, just for us. <laughs> to be blunt about it. <laughs> <laughs> for using the toppers as a mini canvas, would you recommend needle felting directly onto the topper yeah. or would you need a background in the middle? No, I, no, I'm saying you could just needle felt right onto these because our wool, our uh, felt wool sheets are a millimeter thick and these are about a quarter inch thick. So you should be able to needle felt right onto these as a canvas. Now, if you go all the way through the back and you want to give this to somebody, you might want to put your name plate on the back or end up finishing it, you know, with a, some kind of backing plate or cardboard, that's totally up to you. Or maybe you'll end up mounting it on a little floating canvas or shadow box or something. But yeah, I would say as an idea, these could be used 100% as a canvas. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okie dokie. So just a couple more. Sure. <laughs> so for, due to the difference in density between the Wow Felt pads and the Earth Harmony series foams, would you need to change the pressure or the angle of the needle as you if work you're, with it? If you're needle felting on these, it's a, it's a really great question. So the thing is, is this is not going to receive the needle like the Earth Harmony foam. They, they are going to behave differently. So as an example, why don't we see if we can look at this here? And it's, it's a really great question. So we have these... I'll just keep these, these up on the riser. And let's say that I'm working with... Um, my cluster tool, which we'll go over in a minute, this is gonna poke right into the foam. The, the foam receives it very easily, and this one bounces a little more off the surface. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Here's what I like about this. This is gonna push wool into the foam, wool into the foam, wool into the foam. This is gonna bounce off, bounce off, bounce off. And as a result, this pad is going to help push against the backside while you felt so that you're more just tacking the wool down into itself, tacking the wool down into itself. Now, it's going to stick to the felt pad, but not as bad as you think. It's not going to behave like you think. It's going to feel really attached, which is nice, but what I would say is you can use finer needles and get what you're trying to achieve with less impact. Now, if you're using really aggressive, like 36 gauge needles or something like that, what, you, what you're gonna feel is that there's a lot of resistance, see, in, in, in. We really don't need to felt the foam. And I think on like our very old needle felting purse videos, I say, you know, we're not trying to attach the fiber to the foam. The foam is just there to give us something to head towards. Well, this is providing a bit of resistance, but it's possible to have too much resistance. And we're, we'll talk a little bit about resistance, we're on time, um, a little bit about resistance as we talk about how we bring these needles together. So I do think that you're gonna wanna look at how you adjust the tools you work, and you might find that you use some fewer needles or you go to a finer needle um, just to get the, the felting done. But you see that the needles aren't bowing 
you know, they're not bowing on me. It's more likely that your fine needles would, would bow if you're, um, if you put that, you know, like maybe you can get away with a little more sideways pressure in a foam because the foam gives, but this isn't gonna give. So you're really gonna want to. You can go at angles, but you're really not gonna wanna bend your needles when you're working with these. Good question. Well, yeah. We're ready to move on, but we're very happy that we heard the sound that the wow felt pad <laughs> makes when the needle hits it. We're very excited. Very excited. For this. <laughs> okay, so I want I do want to share one sort of tip with you, and I think we're gonna try and do a little video on this. So when Esther Baba was here, she used this felt pad for her dogs and her ears and the tails and all that stuff. And when you're working on very small parts, your needle tends to pass through the item into the, the base or into your work surface. It tends to pass through and so more wool gets embedded. And she tended to clean her felt pad with the claw mat cleaner. So I wanna talk about this real quick. Um, even though we're still talking about mats, I want to um, give you some ideas if you're a mat cleaner kind of person. Um, and I want to encourage you, let me see if I can grab this. If you're using this or the green soy, I would not personally use this claw on this mat because it will tear it up over time. This is very aggressive, very pokey, kind of bristly, like you wouldn't want to drag it hard across the back of your hand. And if you drag it across your foam over time, I feel like you'll tear it up if you're really trying to dig that fiber out. So if you're having issues, consider a topper or even a felt sheet on the top. Um, use your lint rollers every time. Um, and I wouldn't use the claw on this. But I did wanna grab the, um, I think I have the, Anne and I were cleaning it together, the, the big one. Um, and I'm sorry I don't have this one for you yet, but it's really, really we want to solve shipping pro shipping ants questions before, you know, we, we bring something to you that we can't solve. Okay, now we have cleaned this mat. Here's what I want to show you first. Let me all go overhead. You see this mat? Let me come out a little bit. Yeah. On the side of this mat right here, you can get the size. Mm -hmm. On this mat, Kimberly Pulley needle felted an entire portrait of Blossom. And when we first peeled it off, you could kind of see a very slight ghost of Blossom's face. I know if we had done it on the Earth Harmony, there would be indents and impressions because I've seen plenty of portraits done on, on that Earth Harmony, but we cleaned this beautifully and I'm very happy with it. On this side, Esther needle felted her two dogs. So we cleaned about this much, isn't that right, Anne? We cleaned oh, yeah. about this much from her. She, needle felted two dogs she needle felted Sunday Monday Tuesday Wednesday um, part of Wednesday and Thursday and a little bit on Friday on this mat like really intense hours and hours and hours doing the beautiful German Shepherd and the pit bull so what I saw was that when she went to clean wool off just as she was working she would do this she would drag it with this comb so notice, let's see, can you see this maybe against my shirt? If I drag this with this little brush that I have fibers, can you see that? Yes. I have fibers sticking up. So if you use this on here, you're going to tear it up. But what we figured out you can do is take a little disposable razor. Can you see those fibers sticking up, Anne? Can Where do you, you want me to be? Can you putting your hand right in here? Uh, perfect. Can you see it? Yes. You can okay, see so the these little fibers are sticking up. Just taking a little disposable razor and we just shaved it in multiple directions. So I feel like I'm doing the you know vacuum cleaner demonstration in your <laughs> living room right now. So you're going to be removing, if you do this, if you use the brush, I mean if you use the 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 claw, you don't have to because we didn't we really plucked mostly on Kimberly pulleys. Um, and I'm gonna just do this twice. So here we go. Let's go back to the overhead. You can see how much cleaner it is already after one pass. Now you're going to be removing material if you use the claw, but if you really are a claw person, and Esther was very much a claw person, then what I say is just take off the fibers that you've roughed up after you're done. And you can see those fibers here. That's the fibers that you're pulling up and shave it smooth again so this stuff doesn't get embedded in your project. And then pick it all up and then hit it 
with the lint roller. I should have cleaned my lint roller. And, and this would only be for things that are really, really embedded. So this is where she made the dog's tails and the dog's ears, you know, that this got really embedded. And then you just take up all those loose fibers and it's clean. Now, if you use the claw on this, and I personally wouldn't, but if you do, you can expect that you're gonna pull up fibers. So be gentle. Now, we didn't pull any up, so I feel good about that, but be gentle with these. I personally wouldn't use them on there if it were up to me. I would just clean them with a lint roller myself. How we do there? Oh my goodness, we are, are we so happy. Uh, <laughs> now, if we didn't have a lint roller, or if we didn't have one of the extra sticky lint rollers, yeah. could we use packing tape? Use packing tape. Oh yeah, use packing tape. And I just use, when I use packing tape, I'll just make a loop and put it over my hand and roll it. Just, you know, allow it to roll over. I mean, it's kind of a hassle. It's not perfect, but you can use uh, packing tape and you can just dab it on there. I tend to roll it. Um, yeah, but sticky lint rollers are your friend. We always have them around, don't we, Anne? Oh, yeah. Like, she's, we always have a sticky, a sticky roller around. <laughs> yeah, and okay. What about using a fabric or wool shaver? I, I would say it's going to be comparable to this. I mean, I would try and remove as little fiber, you know, from the mat itself as possible. I was telling Anne, I've had a few horror stories with sweater shavers, and I've ruined some wonderful cashmere sweaters. Um, so I'm, I'm a little hesitant because it seems like you press down on them for them to work, and they go, uh hole. So I feel like I could control a razor a little better. But if you have one that works for you, then have at it, I would say. If you have one that works for you, then rock on with it. I've not had good luck with them. And I own them, and they live in the back of the top drawer in my IKEA cabinet. <laughs> That's where they are. <laughs> Quick, 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 I just want to show you this brush. I meant to cover it already. Now the brush, I think it's really, you know, developed in Asia and they do a lot of small projects. I think it was designed as a travel. It's eco-friendly because you don't throw it away. I think that the claw mat cleaner was designed to clean this and not the foam. So this is designed to, you know, clean the brush, which it does really, really well. So if you have this, get this. And you'll find that this, so here, see my fibers in here? We'll just brush them right out. Because these are all like little nylon uh, bristles, and you can clean it up. And then there's also this little brushy side, which I have no idea what it's for. <laughs> I don't. It's just brushing, brushing things out. But if you have the brush, use this. The thing about this is, like many surfaces, is you need something for the, the needles to pass through. So you get resistance because this is stiff. The bristles are very, very strong, so you get resistance, but it is a little rough and it's a little small. So like, I personally wouldn't do a 2D picture on here. Maybe if you're needle felting beads or balls or little things, people like a brush. And I've seen people use these brushes like for years and carry them with them and they're their favorite thing. But if you get a brush, then you really do want the, the claw mat cleaner. And um, I think it's good for like, especially little tiny, 3D projects is what I would use it for. Mm -hmm. yeah, Marilyn okay. says she likes making her bunny ears on the mat. Oh, the nice. And especially if you don't mind fuzzy. Okay, I want a quick jump to felting needles, and I'll tell you that we don't have time for a deep, deep dive into felting needles. I meant to tell you this at the beginning of the show, but um, we do have a whole episode or that we, where we talk about felting needles. We also talk about all these products, um, but the felting needles are their own video. And for, for today's show, you can actually download a free PDF. In the description, we have a link to the supplies we're looking at today, and this download is an item you can add to your shopping cart. There's no charge, but you do need to set up an account and then download it so that you have a place to go and download it. Your order confirmation will give you the download link, or you can just go back to your account and look at your last order, and it'll be there. We cover the items here, and we also go over our felting needles. Whenever you get felting needles from us, they do come on a little card that's color coded. We're working on a little redesign since we've added our latest felting needle, but I want to just help you understand the shape of felting needles really quickly and then tell you if you're looking for a deep dive into felting needles, follow the link for today's show and even just go to our felting needles page. But there is a link right in this PDF that if you download. Felting needles 
people always want to understand the difference between a triangle and a star and a spiral. And so I have a little demonstration for you here today just to kind of help unravel felting needles a little bit. Um, felting needles, you know, are made around on a round pole. So here I just have some paper straws, good for the environment, compostable. Uh, paper straws, we take a round tube and then we reshape it to have this purpose of a felting needle. But what we need to do to it is give it a place to give it notches. So I drop my, I drop my prop, let me grab it here. <laughs> very, very graceful, getting down <laughs> on the floor. So I made here a paper tube to explain how, what a triangle felting needle is. A triangle felting needle is a, is a round tube that has then the tip or the shaft of it has been shaped or changed or molded, however we make them, um, into a triangle. So the tip of the needle now has three flat sides. So we go from it being round to having, we take that tube and we give it three flat sides. And when we put notches on a felting needle, it is here. It's right here. We put notches on a felting needle on this corner. Now sometimes we call them barbs, but really it's like a notch. So if you will, a, a, the notches in the felting needle is like this. Let me see if I can get that out. So this grabs onto the scale. Anne's giving me a thumbs up. This grabs onto the scale of the wool, and the wool has little scales on it. These grab onto the scales of the wool, poke them together, poke them together, all right? So this is now, this is tapered so that these can be stacked and I couldn't really taper it, but this is how it's done. So this is a triangle. Now a star, what's different about a star is the side, and I shouldn't have cut those two, but a star is a triangle that has been given extra edges like this. And I think there's five, I wanna say, so I'm probably gonna mess this up. But so what happens is, now we've got one, two, three, and we can have, there ends up being five. Did we get this right? So this becomes a star. I'm sure I messed this up somewhere. One, two, three. Um, it gives them extra edges, so maybe they come out. Yeah, it gets the ridge going this way, right? Yes. Okay. They end up coming out, so you have more points. I failed with my paper demonstration. Um, so that you have more points that you can put the notches on. And that's how we create a star, is we run those ridges so that now you have more edges to put the notches on. Does that make sense? Yes. This is beautiful and it's amazing. <laughs> I know my paper. I wish I had done this better. So now I have to think. I have to think about how I could do this better. But this is a star gets more points. So, what does it matter and why do we care? The the triangle gives us a place to put the notches in the first place, right? The triangle gives us a place to put the notches on the corners. Then. The star was to develop to say, how can we get even more push from these needles? So if you have a 38 triangle, a 38 star is going to be more aggressive because now you have more places to put those notches to grab onto the wool. The gauge is gonna really, now you'll notice that most of these look the same, the felting needles look the same, but the gauge is gonna to speak to how big are those notches. Think about like a finishing saw, or what's like a little saw? Like, oh, a, like a hacksaw. A hacksaw versus a chainsaw versus, a, what's the little like finishing oh. saws, a sawzall or something that you can cut out little shapes with. So one is big teeth and one is little teeth. So although these are very microscopic, that the coarse needles are going to have bigger notches, uh, sink more aggressive, grab onto more wool, ideally, and the finer ones are gonna have smaller notches. But they're also placed in different places. They're also different places on the shaft, or the number's gonna vary depending on the manufacturer. But that's kind of the difference is, big teeth, little teeth, big notches, little notches. A triangle, you can only have so many notches. A star, you can have more notches. And then we've added the spiral. The spiral needles, were traditionally a triangle with a twist, which the goal was give us the punch of a star, but the finesse of a triangle. So 
push as much wool as possible, but don't leave a big mark. Don't tell everybody about it. That's, that was the idea of a spiral. Well now, and this is our, our latest size, so 38 stars and spirals have been our favorite workhorses for a while. 38 triangles are great for classes and great for tools because they're on the medium side of fine. And again, we dig way into this on another video on our felting needles page or grab the link um, in, the, in this PDF download that you can get for today. We'll give you a link to it. Now we have a 38 star spiral. I brought in somebody. Who do, I, who, who do we want to work on? I brought in a couple of people. I brought in a 38 star spiral. So we have 38 star with a twist. So we're just saying like, give us as much push and twist and entanglement as we can in one item. And when Esther was here working on her dogs, I swear she lived with the 38 star spiral. It was like her favorite workhorse needle. Yes. Um, what? You are, are like blowing our minds with this. Like you get A plus for Marie for today. I really? Deborah says thank you so much for taking it to this level. Thank you for explaining. Somebody said that this is our favorite Wooly Wednesday. Oh, you guys are great. Thank you. I always say what I need is like four hours at a time to spend with you because I have so much. We I would I want you to know. I want you to know as much as possible because I know you don't have the whole candy store in your living room. Where here the gals can just pick anything they want. Mm -hmm. Mm. To, to try and work with. Uh, let me show you these needles real quick. We've, uh, oh, I'm on the wrong place, sorry. We made them orange. The 38 star spiral is orange. Um, right now our 38s have been plain. We're talking about painting one of the other 38s, but the orange needle from us is the 38 star spiral. And it is definitely a workhorse. Now this little birdie, he really needs to be, really needs to be finished, I know. Um, but this would be a really good shaping felting needle if you want to really keep compressing things. So like maybe here in his neck, if I said, you know, I really need to, to shape that some more and get some more work done here. You can see that I'm gonna leave a mark. Let me go in tight for you, get in close. I could make some good tracks with this 38 uh, star spiral, and that may not be your goal, but it is a shaping needle, and it's really gonna compress wool, even though this little birdie, he's already felted, but he's not rock hard. He's Marie's, Marie's density, which is not overly done. And I'm gonna give him a little eye hole with this. So you wanna use aggressive needles for eye holes and marks. You do wanna always be aware of your wire because this needle will break just like any other needle will break. And if you're not sure where your wire is, well then just turn your needle backwards, you know, and see if you can find it or poke a pin in there. But I wanna show you that this 38 star spiral does a really good job of making a hole. It's not a finishing needle, it's a shaping needle. It's absolutely a shaping, compaction, uh, workhorse needle. Use two together if you want, um, and you know, just compact your wool all day long. Now I wanna go home and work on this bird. <laughs> he's undone from what, like two years ago? Yeah, well, pre, he's, pre -COVID. he's getting lots of love. We wanna know if there's a tutorial. <laughs> oh, y'all, this was the Waffer <laughs> Bird series. So there's a blue bird behind me and this bird, and there are tons of beautiful Waffer Birds on our Facebook page. Um, but this is a tutorial, so search, um, W-A-F-F-A bird in YouTube and it will come up. So it's our wild and free fiber art bird. And the fun thing about it is you learn how to make him uh, freestanding. It's very easy. You can make them just any colors that you want and then have fun with the wings and stuff. So this guy, where is he? He's a waffle bird also right back there. So the sky's the limit with the waffle birds. Um, so the 38 star spiral, if you're looking for a workhorse, if you're looking for a needle that just has a little more punch, but that's not a 36 or the 32, then check out the 38 star spiral. Um, so again, we have a full tutorial on the felting needles and I know y'all have lots of questions and Anne's been writing down questions and thoughts and things that we want to talk about. So if it makes sense for us to redo the felting needles, uh, tutorial I will. I want to jump into the tools and kind of show you some of these things because there's a whole bunch of tools on the market. We have a bunch of tools and I want to help you make sense of them a little bit to see what you might need or might not want. So um, ask 
ask away and I'll demonstrate if, you know what makes sense. I want to start over here with the metal uh, felting, the metal felting tools. These are, um, we've had these for a long, long time. Um, they range from big, scary, uh, kind of aggressive needles. This is a 20, this is a 12, oh, this is a six. Oh, I'm missing the 12, but we have a 20. Uh, we have a 12 in the middle, which Do is, no, no, it's fine. We have a 20, a 12, which is missing, a six, a four, and a two. And for a long time, I mean, I, I didn't work with many other needles, and I wanna tell you what I do love about them. Um, I've got, I've just got the righteous mess going on, <laughs> which is my life. That's I, how you know fun is had. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Anne. <laughs> okay, um, so about these needles, they're metal, they're durable, they're made in the, the United States here by a lovely couple who's been in the felting industry for a long, long time. The, they're like aluminum, so you know they're fairly lightweight. One of the things I like about them is kind of like the needle spacing. I've always liked about that little quarter inch of a needle spacing uh, between the two. It's a nice little space for getting work done. I like these needles, uh, these tools with like 38s and spirals. You can use all kinds of variety for them. And they're just great like compression tools or work tools. So this is easy to hold and it's lightweight. It's very, very durable and very effective as far as a, a felting needle goes. So. Um, to change the needles is the same on all of these tools here. Um, they're all really made the same way, so I'll show you that. But let me show you, this is the 20, this is the biggest one. It's very large and, and it's very aggressive and I wouldn't leave it laying around if I had children or pets that might get to it. But this is really for laying out like a big, um, a big wall hanging or a big surface area. And these are ideal to be used um, with just just that in mind that you're, this big tool is if you have a big area to cover and you really want to knock it out with needle felting as opposed to wet felting. So that's what that would be used for. Quickly, let me show you how these needles, how to change the felting needles. All you do is you just unscrew the end and we ship these without felting needles. They come in the package though. They the do felting, come in the package. The felting needles come in the package, um, but you have to load them because they don't travel well. And this one's been sitting in the studio for years or actually on display. So that's all you do is you just seat them down here in this little shaft. So when you get them, they are like this and they're unloaded. So that's all you need to do to change the felting needles or to insert them for the first time all of these are the same and they're very very easy to use okay any questions on these on those no no i would i didn't think so so these are the metal felting tools that we have here and um i like if you're going to get only one look at the four i think the four is great or the the two is great if you're more into wood and you want more like a medium tool, check out the punch it tool. And I think we went over these guys at least in our uh, felting needle video. The punch it needle tool is very nice. It's ergonomic. It, it fits wonderfully in your hand. It's very lightweight. It is made of a walnut wood, so this is its natural color. It's not stained, I really like that. So any smell in the tool when you get it is the wood itself, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, you could oil them, I suppose, if you want. Now notice these, it holds up to eight needles, um, but this one, this one we have eight in it, and these are look like a whole bunch of triangles, and then this one is loaded with four spirals. So there's lots of ways you could configure these needles depending on what you're working on. And again, this is for like a medium sized project. So if I have a tool like this, one that's this big, this one I might use for flatten with all the aid in there for flattening a big project where I really want to tack, tack, tack the surface as opposed to push through something. But I might use something like the four, the four spiral together to work on a bigger project like this. If I'm really trying to compact the wool, and I'll go ahead and uh, felt on this little guy. If I'm really trying to make good headway on a big project and I'm in the under layers, like I'm not worried about how everything looks, then you could use a big tool like this. Um, 
I really like to use needles that are closer together. And so I might choose for this project, for me personally, I might choose something that is even a finer needle and a little bit closer together. So to point that out, let's look at the pen tool right here. This is the Clover pen tool. It is our pink, it's a pink Clover pen tool. One of the things I like about it is that it comes with a cap, which makes travel like super duper easy. And there's two ways you can use this tool. You can use it with this little pink cap on top, just like it is here, or you can just unscrew this and take it off. So you can also, I used to keep like two of these in my purse at all time. It comes loaded with like 340 triangles. They're unpainted, but they're fine needle and they're really great for just like if you're, this is your action. If you like to bouncy poke, bouncy poke, this is a great tool for that. I love how close the, the needles are together. It's wonderful, but you do have to, you know, hit every little square quarter of an inch because you have such a small little footprint. When you use a bigger tool like this, you might feel like you're getting more done, but you also have all this space in the middle of the needles that isn't getting felted. So you go here and you have to, you know, tiny over, tiny over, tiny bit over. Do you know what I mean? Because otherwise you leave a space. So if you feel like things are looking pocky, if you're working on like a, on like a, a 2D surface, it's because you're skipping spaces depending on the spacing of your needle. That's just something to think about. Now, but these tools, I also like to use them with like two, two needles in them. They're lightweight, they're easy to use, it's easy to change the needles. So let's look at that really quickly, changing the needles on these guys. Am I too, am I too upsy downsy? Is it driving, making y'all seasick? We're doing okay? Okay, so to change these needles, all you do is you, sorry, all you do is you twist this shaft right here and you just push them right out. So the needles are just gonna go right into this little space here and they give you little notches so you know where the needle head is supposed to go. You don't have to try and control that. So you just put the needles back into that little notch. Super easy to change the needles. These do come with the needles, uh, the 340 triangle needles pre-loaded, and they come like this with a little cap on there, and then this cap right here. It also comes with a couple of little guards. So if you're, they have clover, at least they used to have these molds that you could needle felt in, and the little guards were to keep you from hitting the side of the mold or whatever, so I've always thrown them away. <laughs> Truth be told, I've always thrown them away. So this is the clover pen tool. It's a favorite. Anne and I consider it a must-have. Like, if you came in the door and said, what, to, like, what tool must I have? This is one of our must-haves. Quick, quick, quick. This is the clover. We call it the clover punch tool. It's the 8901. 8900. 8900. Called the clover punch tool. Great for kids. Great for, I think, like smoothing out a ball or smoothing out a sphere. I don't love it for building shapes. Um, it's not even, this one's not even loaded with needles. That's <laughs> funny. Um, the thing is, it has this little sheath on it, this little um, guard that you can um, lock into place so that if you're traveling, you can keep the needles in place and they won't stick out. But you can't override this guard. So every time you needle, sounds like this. And you, because of this, you never quite get the push or the punch of like a four needle tool. So this is good for smoothing, rounding things out, but not great for building shapes. It just doesn't work that way. If you wanna build shapes, you can absolutely use a pen tool, the, the wooden punch it tool, um, or just single needles and such. So uh, for single needles, we have these fabulous wood holders. We call them the righty tool the Righty Tool, their wood. Um, they have our logo on them, it's kind of fun. Um, and what I like about the Righty Tool is how easy they are to use and also you can see our color coding in the shaft. These are our newest models, which are even a lighter wood. Um, yours might, if you have one from us already, it might look like this, it might be a little darker wood. Um, the wood is the new was even very smooth and this is a little bit tighter which we like because it feels very very stable and this is just great for ergonomics really comfort with your hand we do sell them in a 10 pack so if you want to have like each of your different size needles in one you can some people even take to 
um, color coding the ends of the tips, or if they're the 38, they might mark it 38 star or give it their own color code. One thing I really like about these tools that I, I think is just great is that you can travel with them by just turning the needle around and then you can store it away in your purse or in your bag just by putting the needle backwards. So that's a really fun little tip. I don't know if you know about that, but this is just called the Ridey Tool. And um, just a quick funny story. The reason it's named the Ridey Tool is because it's the perfect right tool. No, because mm -hmm. when we first um, got them, the, um, the factory printed our name backwards. Is this an example? No, the factory printed our name backwards. So then we had the lefty and the righty. So the lefties were printed backwards. So if you were left-handed, it read correctly. So <laughs> that's the only difference. And we named all the rest the righty tools. There's one, one last tool I want to show you because I know you're going to see me work with it. We've named it the cluster tool. Um, and there's two versions. There's the raw version and there's the cushy version. These tools, in my mind, were invented by Jennifer Fields, who came here and taught a class. And this was her finishing tool. Was uh, She used three. I used four to five at a time. Uh, 40 triangle needles rubber banded together. You can see how grubby my rubber bands are because I use this all the time. This is a great compression tool and finishing tool. She used it as a finishing tool. I also use it as a compression tool. And then on some of mine, I then have covered them with core wool and then yellow wool just to make them a little more comfortable. I know some people do things with clay and such, but uh, for me, the wool is really nice on my hands. And while these are really fine needles, I want to tell you that the, um, the compression power of fine needles together should really not be underestimated. You can really compact an entire piece with wonderful finesse if you're willing to have this gentle action of poking, let me see, I want to go here, of poking um, at sort of a shallow depth. So if I want to really compress something and get it tight, but also somewhat smooth at the same time, I will use my cluster tool and just work over the whole thing. You can even shape pieces, but I want to tell you that these little cluster of fine felting needles can do wonders for actual compression and firming of a shape. So this is absolutely, you know, it's free if you have the needles and a rubber band. So you don't have to buy a fancy tool. And this for me, the righty tool, the pen tool, um, and the cluster tool are, in my world, must-haves felting tools. If I had nothing else, and single needles, of course. So you need your single felting needles and then a couple of a couple of holders as well. We have so many questions. Okay, <laughs> and I know we're over time, and thanks y'all for your patience as well. And uh, okay, see what we can do. Okay, so firstly, righty tools. A couple yes. of our felting friends are sharing that they have some righty tools on hand and are noticing sometimes that the the peg that holds the needles seems to get loose. Do you oh, have any tips? Just push it down further. Just push that peg down further. Just just push it down so that this should be these these two should go together quite well so you can see on this uh, righty tool let me show you up close if I can see this one how close these are together so there's not much sticking out the new righty tools there's definitely more space what did I do with it already I've, I've already oh they're here so the the new righty tools so this is an older one here, see how close in that is? Go ahead and push it in. So that, that peg really shouldn't be loose. And um, and if that doesn't work, then call us. If you can't push it in, to if you pushed it in all the way and it's still loose, then call us. But um, this one, it's sticking up more, so you're gonna have more room, more room to push it in and, and get it seated in there. And just to confirm, that one is the new version, the, the light, one that's longer. Yeah, the light one and the one that's sticking out more is the new version. Mm -hmm. um, Came on. Okie dokie. 
for any of these tools, do you need to oil the tools or oil the needles before using them? No, you, you don't need to oil the needles, but if your needles are sitting in a tool for years and years, then they, they probably will rust. If, you, if you're not gonna be using your tool, then uh, you should take the needles out and consider putting them in a little container, maybe with um, the silica packets that come in your shoes or whatever you last bought, because silica packets are everywhere. We store all of our needles here uh, with silica packets as well um, to control that, to control any moisture. So I would say if you're not going to use a tool for a long time, then take the needles out and put them in a place that has very little moisture and then even consider, you know, a silica packet with them. Do you all felting needles fit in all of the tools? The, the best thing to do is, for the most part, yes, but on some tools we'll say request unpainted needles because some are just a little tighter than others. And um, if they don't fit for some reason, then you can call and let us know. Now, other people's color-coded needles, I don't know, but all of these tools are designed to hold all of the needles. Sometimes color coding can be a little thick and can impact how easily um, the needle fits into the tool. If that's the case and you're willing to, you can go after the shaft with a little bit of sandpaper, um, depending on you know where you got the needles from. Our goal is for them all to fit, but I think on the pen tool that we recommend people choose unpainted needles because this is a little bit tighter of a shaft. Um, and so I think we put that right there on the page to request unpainted needles. So you do have to, for us, you have to do that in the comments box, right? Or do you yes. have it on there? You have uh, it on comments the comments box in the oh. last page of the checkout. Okay. Okay. What else? Oh, righty. Is there one needle felting tool that's more comfortable to hold? Like, what one is the most comfortable? Oh, it really depends. I love the pen. So if you're comfortable holding a, a pen, the pen is really comfortable, and the righty tool is really comfortable. So if you're doing little work, if you're doing little work, because this one can hold one or three, and this one can only hold one. Um, so I use both of these all the time. If you're doing bigger work, this is, this is really my favorite is the, the punch it tool. If you're doing bigger work or you need to get you know more compression across something, this is a beautiful tool and the wood is really comfortable. Alrighty, is there a tool that you would gravitate towards for specific purposes like needle felting 3D, needle felting pictures? Mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're needle, it depends on how big the picture is because I've been needle felting um, some little landscapes. I've been very comfortable working with a single needle. I'm very happy doing that. And then I use like either a little cluster tool or my pen tool. So for if it depends on how big it is. I tend to do things that are not much bigger than a sheet of paper or a half sheet of paper because I just seem to like to work small. So I think it's really going to depend on the size. But what I like about the pen tool and the cluster tool is how close those needles are together. These two are really close cousins as far as that needle spacing. So either of these would work great for a smaller picture. If I was doing a bigger picture and I needed to get that landscape, that background in, I'd be using this tool and you have to play with you know what needles you like. But if I were doing something bigger and I wanted to tack down the whole background, I would probably use this if I was going to tack down the whole thing. You have to be methodical, you know, and kind of, be, but you've got about an inch here, and so you're going to kind of go inch by inch by inch. I do it like shelf paper, smooth it out, so that I go from like one edge across and down or a corner this way, but you, I kind of treat it like shelf paper. You don't want to pock around or you're going to get wrinkles. We are golden. Are we good? We are good. I, I feel like I wish I'd shared so much more with you, but I hope this is a little bit of insight. And um, we're, I'm going to read all of your questions. Anne's got something. What is it? We have. I think this, this comment really sums up everything that I'm seeing right now. Dolores says, my goodness, thank you so much for sharing all of this information and answering questions. We all needed answered. Oh, I'm so glad. And please, if we didn't answer your question, if we passed it up, please post it down below and it will give us a better idea of either what we need to make some short videos on, how we can improve the product description or even product videos, and maybe even what other videos you want. So I know that there's like some secondary needle felting tools. I know that we have some new fiber that we're probably going to be sharing 
sharing next week and so maybe we can talk go back and like rehab the fiber conversation next week if that's of interest to you grab the download for today's show follow the link in the description it's one of the items down below the video where you can watch the the replay and please do leave a comment down below let us know how uh what better we can answer for you and we're gonna give away some prizes now Anne's bringing the, right. the prize hat so let me do this Bring us up here. Yay. Yay! I've made a big old mess, Anne. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Thank y'all for, for playing with us. So Anne's been writing down names. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to give away prizes for the live show, and there will be more prizes for the replay or the discussion after the live so if we didn't answer your question if you have a favorite takeaway or a favorite tool that you got to have let us know in the comments but our winners for the live show are Suzanne Cushing and I have Deborah Dono so congratulations y'all thank you so much and hey if you want to felt with us some more we have some really great offerings I want to tell you our school right here uh, feltingtutorials.com my signs are sideways would you grab that bowl mm -hmm. this Friday we are launching a brand new cl class my dear friend Don Edwards some of you've been waiting for this class this is called the woodsy vessel it's wet felting a vessel with incredible texture she actually came here a few years back and we took this class in person. We did. we did a collaboration with staff and we made our own vessel. It's on display here in the shop. This is the one Dawn makes in this class and she brings even more textures to it. So if you want to, one, have something that's earthy, rich, and beautiful, what you want to do is go to the school. Let me hit that one more time. Um, the coming soon page should be up now and make sure you're registered for the school. On Friday, we'll be sending out the early bird registrations you can get in the class. We're gonna be in the pre-registration for a week and then the class goes live a week from Friday. So check it out. It's called Wet Felting the Woodsy Vessel with Don Edwards, a really fun class and one of our favorite teachers, just a delightful human. She's watching today. Oh, hi Don. She's on here. <laughs> <laughs> and now you can shop with us. Everything here is on our site. We're here Monday through Saturday, Monday through Friday, nine to four, Saturdays, 10 to four. We answer the phone. We answer your communications. If you need to ask us a question or you want some help, use the contact us page. It's the mm -hmm. best way for us to reach you make sure you set up a free account we have lots of PDFs you can download for absolutely free but you do need an account to do that and come back next week we're gonna have some more new goodies for you this time it's going to be new fibers and we'll you know we'll look at some of the fibers together so you can better understand them I know you have lots of questions about that too yes all right y'all have a good week we appreciate you bye, bye.